the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Also, I want to become a professional pilot. What are you doing about it? Is it when you kill people all around because of carelessness and lack of mastery? <laughs> Incompetence is terrible. Fight it. The world only has time for people who are exceptionally competent in ministry, in life, always. Let me quickly touch on the fourth point. Is God helping us? The fourth area, let's do a quick recap. What's the first area? Ah, no, no way. You see how students fail exams? What's the first area? That's right. Your spiritual advancement. What's the second area? Mental transformation. What's the third area? Your academics, your career. The fourth area is your finances. Please pay attention. Pay attention in the name of Jesus and in the name of honesty. Pay attention. Proverbs 22 and verse 7. You're going to read it loud and clear if you're a Christian. Proverbs 22 and verse 7. Whoever is born again, you will read this scripture. Are we ready? One, two, read. Let's use King James. The rich ruled over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. This is a very powerful scripture. Now, please look up. Look up. Sit down. Sit down. You can sit down for a few minutes. One of the deceptions again we have received in our lives is that once we serve God and just focus on loving Jesus, money will find its way and just come to us. That looks like a very well-meaning statement. But let me tell you, my dear people, there is no, it is, it is, it is, it is completely far from the truth. I know some of the honest people, sincere people who love Jesus with all their heart, bills are almost killing them right now. Do you know, statistically speaking, there are three major reasons why marriage is failed, statistically speaking. Reason number one is finance. Are you aware of that? Reason number one is what? And one of the number one reasons for compromises of all sorts is this issue of finance. Please do not downplay it. And let me explain what I'm saying. The knowledge and the pursuit for finance it's not some of these mundane canal pursuits that people do around. We are talking of pursuit that is driven by kingdom for the sake of your own efficiency. Write this down. Money has only two purposes. If you don't know the purpose of money in your life, you will abuse it. There are two assignments that money was sent to achieve in your life. Assignment number one is time redemption. The first assignment of money in your life is as a tool to help you redeem time. The Bible says to redeem time. Financial resources help men redeem time. Number two, efficiency and effectiveness. The second assignment of money in your life is to help you live an efficient and an effective life. So if you build a house, it has helped you to live an efficient and an effective life. 
if you are to go to the park and stay for two hours and God gives you the privilege of buying a car, he has helped you redeem time. Are you seeing now? When you look at finances as a tool to help for your time redemption and your efficiency, you will not serve it and you will not idolize it. It's a tool. There is such an obsession for money in our society. An obsession for money. And I, I submit to you that sometimes we men of God do not even help to make it better because the obsession comes from us. Money is important. Resources are important. But we must bring it within the context of balance. The obsession for money that drives people to hell, they don't care what they do. The most important thing is let me have it. Money without a purpose will kill you. It will tear you like a wild animal. Are we together? But then on the flip side, to ignore the importance of finance in your life, you will have you will spend your lifetime paying that price. You need resources, especially in the times that we live in right now. There is no point pretending about it. The availability of resources will make your life very effective. system of the kingdom. Write it down. The kingdom of God has an economic system. You must obtain from people who have proven results. Our world is full of noise makers. Everybody is talking about money. Everybody is an expert on finances. Teaching rubbish and teaching nonsense. Deceiving people. Distracting the focus of people. The doctrine of hurry, the doctrine of achieving anyhow. It doesn't matter what happens. Let me just make the money. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Let me balance it clearly. Because you find people all around the world talking about money, teaching about money. And many people have, have embraced all kinds of satanic doctrines about money to the detriment of their own salvation. Can I tell you this? Any pursuit for money that will destroy your relationship with God and take you to hell is not worth it. Are we together now? There are some of you looking at me here, you can kill for money. Ah! Let your 1,000 get missing. You will shake anybody, including your destiny helper. That 1,000 must come out. That is an obsession that is already leading you to the path of hell. God wants us to be blessed, but there is a pathway. The formula is even as thy soul prospering. Get my teaching if you can, even as your soul prospers. Listen to it carefully. Ah, may it never come to me. The kind of money that will take his place for my life, the kind of money that will distract my passion and my love and my honor to God, far be it for me. It's good to have money, but you must let the world around you know that you will love God. Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. If all I have is Please listen to me. In Psalms 35 and verse 27, we'll soon begin to pray. Psalm 35 and verse 27, it says, Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified with heart and prosperity. 
prosperity of Joshua Selma. God has pleasure when we prosper. Why? Because it gives us the convenience to be able to serve him. Imagine that I'm, as I've come here now, preaching with fire like this. As soon as I'm done, I just carry my own bow and start walking around. You know what that means. I don't have to tell you. I'm not saying it's wrong to, to, to collect money. But now I begin to tell you this. I know the dangerous thing is that hunger can make you see all kinds of things. Do you know that I can use the prophetic? Look at me. I can use the prophetic and see Yes, I'm seeing two million in your account where I have to drop something. It doesn't mean it's the Holy Ghost that was part of it. Just because it was the gift of God that was abused, it was hunger that corrupted the purity of administering that gift. The gift came from God, but the administration of it was given by hunger. Genesis 42 and verse 1 and 2. Never forget this scripture for as long as you live. Genesis 42 from verse 1 and 2. The day the Holy Spirit showed me this scripture, it humbled me. Let me read it for you. Now, when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, notice where there was corn, Egypt. Egypt is not a good place to go, but if there is corn there, it will force you to look the direction of Egypt. It says, now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, why do ye look upon one another, verse 2, and he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down hither and buy for us things that we may live and not die. Do you know it was the journey to look for corn that took Israel to Egypt? They remained there except for a while till they became slaves. Hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. Hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. When you are hungry, you will be, you will be shocked at the extent of the compromises you can make. Hallelujah. And I pray that as you study, there are sufficient materials. Now, I don't know if it's proper to recommend a few here, but please do well if you will allow, if your people will allow, find out all the teachings on finances that have come from this assembly, listen to them. And then, you may do well to get my teachings. Success Systems is a three-part series. Financial Dominion, The Wealthy Place, and then even as your soul prospers, stay with it and listen to it. I give you a guarantee that it will give you a balanced scope of kingdom finances without destroying your, your spirit and without distorting your mind with rubbish. Do not join. People and believers. Who in a bid to balance carnality. And obsession for finance. Just downplay the importance of it. Believe me when I tell you. You will need finance. For every day of your life in the end. And woe betimes a man. Who does not have sufficient resources. In the day of need. It will push you to a point of extreme compromise. The last area, are you ready for it? The last admonishment is master and build destiny relationships. You must master the art of relationships and you must build destiny relationships. Proverbs 13 and verse 2. This morning is just a talk, it's just an admonishment and then we'll pray. Proverbs 13 and verse 20. Are we there? Proverbs 13 and verse 20, 20, 13, 20. The Bible says, He that walketh with the wise shall be wise, but a companion of fools. Proverbs 13 and verse 20. He that walketh with the wise, he doesn't have to be wise, just walk with wise people. There will be a rub off of that wisdom on you. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. He says, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. This scripture is very powerful. You must sustain the grace and the courage to understand the principles of relationships.
you must study the principles of relationships. Be fruitful means be relational because everything multiplies on the basis of relationships. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but who loves you really matters. There is so much that can be done in your life on the strength of destiny relationships. Master relationships. He that wants friends must first show himself friendly. I've done teachings along that path. Master relationships. Understand tolerance. Relationships are built on mutual contribution to the growth of the parties involved. Parasitic relationships will always end in pain and always end with regrets. You cannot be part of a relationship that you are not mutually contributing to. Even our relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in as much as we are benefactors of his life, but we are bringing joy to his heart as we bring, we participate in the global harvest. Used to be that song, Must I go and empty handed? Must I go and empty handed? Must I meet my Savior so? Not one soul with which to greet him. Must I empty handed? So it's a relationship that is mutual. While he spent his life dying for us to draw us close to the Father. We spend our lives serving his purposes. There are many of you who do not have friends. The lifespan of your relationship with any friend is two weeks. Everybody hates me. Everybody hates me. Something is wrong with you. You are the problem. You cannot come into someone's world at your times. No matter how honorable I am, I'm not going to come to your house if, if the rule is to then if I come to your house, I must obey the rule that I've been there. The challenge with many people is that they want relationships at their times. It doesn't work that way. Are you learning something? You cannot master relationships if you do not understand the law of honor. You must learn to place regard and honor on people. Don't look down on people. Don't demean people. Don't love only those who can contribute to you. No. So these are the five areas I want you to focus on. Your spiritual growth, prayer life, word study life, your corporate fellowship life. Number two, your mental transformation, belief systems, sustaining superior belief systems. Number three, your academics, your career, ultimately your assignment. Redeem time, the unit of destiny, is time. Number four, pay attention to your finances. You don't pay attention to your finances by doing business. You don't pay attention to your finances by getting a job. You don't pay attention to your finances just by being an entrepreneur. The first assignment is to build understanding. Understand the economic system of the kingdom. Wealth is not what you pursue. Wealth is what you attract by who you are becoming. Not just what you do. It is attracted by growth, who you are becoming. I've done an illustration like that one time during your conference here. And then number five, master and build relationships. I am here preaching simply because of relationships. Let me tell you this. Everything money can buy, relationships can pay for. Listen to my teaching through riches. If everything you buy in your life, you use money, you are really poor. May you never be so poor that the only thing you have in your life is money. There are realms when you get to everybody there has money. There must be another kind of currency you use. Relationship is currency. It can buy anything money can buy. It is our relationship with the Holy Ghost that has brought us power. It's our relationship with the Holy Ghost that has brought us many possibilities. Master relationships. Don't allow your destiny helpers to keep passing you like that. 
they pass you every day if you do not understand relationships you will suffer you will translate that suffering to your children and your children's children and that is wrong some of our parents today God gave them profound opportunities. They wasted it because they did not understand the principles of relationships. Others, they may not have so many qualifications, but they mastered relationships. Is there any man in the world that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Your name can be a padlock to your children or it can be a key. Your name can be a padlock to your family. Your name. My name to be a padlock to my children. No. Do you know there are people today? You say your name is this and that. They say, oh, that man in 1971, God used him to help me. You are the one looking for this job. There is no interview for you again. Return on one day. Someone's name becoming a key. Whereas there's someone just at the point where they should give you say, what, what was that son name again? He said, mention me, which one? The one from this thing. He said, yes. He said, that man. That man destroyed my life, added seven years of suffering to me. Have you ever had anybody with the name Jezebel? Hello? How many people have you had with the name Jezebel? How many people have you had with the name Judas? They may be people, but they are not much. And that name can become a self-inflicted cause. People have had to change their names in our world today to move forward. They have denied certain surnames and created others because they wanted to move forward. You must master relationships. Master relationships. Have you been blessed? You walk this path, I give you a guarantee. It's only a matter of time. When you look at yourself 10 years from now, you'll be smiling and say, thank God for the student congress. Thank God for revelation. When your contemporaries are wondering, how come your life is so excellent? How come your life is full of dexterity and advancement? You will tell them it's the mercy of God. The mercy of God. Moments that were taken advantage of. And for tonight, very briefly, I'm going to be praying on the prayer request and then we'll just do the impartation and we're done. Romans chapter 1 and verse 11. You are the one that we pray.
cast the spirit of fear. Can I tell you this? There are many people who fear is what is keeping them from moving forward. Fear of me. Fear of fear.
life and every destiny is at the mercy of the grace that empowers it. Anointings and graces are like batteries. The battery that empowers a remote control is how it is efficient. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup. He does not anoint the cup. It is you he anoints. And then the result shows in the cup. Don't downplay the place of impartation. We are products of this grace. Products of impartation. Mighty anointings. Commanding possibilities in this kingdom. You will live an ordinary Christian life without spiritual empowerment. And what you are about to receive within these few minutes, believe me, will set your life on fire. All kinds of graces. Now, listen. Here's what I want you to do for me. Whilst you are receiving, please you must be your brother's keeper too. Let's not have casualties here. Are we together now? Yes. So not just those who are standing. When people are running around close to you, scattering chairs, please. I know you are receiving, but please turn and focus and help them. Stabilize them once you receive. Now I want to pray for you. Listen to me. There are people here whose prayer life has gone down. There are people here whose passion and zeal for God has gone down. There is a grace for encounters. Encounters do not just happen. There is a grace that draws men to depths and dimensions of intimacy. I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus, Father, as many who must drink of this grace, right now I decree and declare, at the count of three, may that grace rest upon me.
is open up your heart to receive. You had the gentleman, someone gave a testimony here, I think it was yesterday or today, that he wrote 20, 20 prayer points. And at the time he was speaking, he said there was 15. If you are still left to drop yours, you can quickly do that right now. We want to pray. Paul said, for this cause, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he prayed for them. While I kneel down here praying, please everywhere let's be praying in the spirit as we receive with our hearts open. Are we ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, you don't have to kneel. You just open up your heart and connect.
is not in heaven. It's within the power of a man to help you. In the name that is above all names, anyone who has been destined by God to be the channel for the answer of this prayer, I compel them to respond to you. I compel them to respond to you. I compel them to respond to you. Some of these challenges here, as a result of demons and wicked spirits, hear me, every power that is behind the challenges we presented here, by the God of heaven, we declare that we cast them out of your life, we cast them out of your situation. In the name of Jesus. There are situations here that require creative miracles. May the God of heaven bring to existence in your life and your family if it means to create what was not there, may God create it. Now, if you're sick in your body, my time is up. You're sick in your body, just make contact there. Just right where you are. We may not have time for testimonies, but lay your hands where you are trusting God. No matter the infirmity, blood diseases, all kinds of medical. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. I want you to believe God right now. I want to pray for you.
partial or complete blindness. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. Heart conditions. Every kind of palpitation of the heart, hole in the heart, deformity of the heart, be healed now in the name of Jesus. Every kind of organ failure, system failure, in the name of Jesus, be healed right now. Bone conditions of all sorts, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, receive all kinds of abdominal conditions. In the name that is above all names, be healed. Ulcers be healed. Fevers be healed. Loss of memory be healed. Loss of your hair. You lose your hair mysteriously as though a cancer patient. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Hear me. For those of you who are standing in for your loved ones, no matter how far they are, whether it's in a hospital, may the angel of the Lord's presence visit those hospitals and take them from the bed of affliction. Whether I mention your case or not, that you are on this ground with any kind of sickness, be healed in the name of Jesus. If there are any of your loved ones with sadly the pandemic COVID-19 in the name of healing for them now. We cause that devil from their system. We cause that devil from their life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, the Lord is ministering to me that there are people, you have what we call recurrent sicknesses. Every month you will treat the same disease. Every month you treat it now, whether typhoid, whether malaria, it comes back, whether pounding headache, in the name of Jesus, be healed right now. There are people the Lord is ministering to me, you have extreme, it's like a condition where if you stand in the sun for a while, you begin to feel dizzy. And if you are not careful, you can even fall down or pass out. In the name of Jesus, the last time it happened is the last time it will ever happen to you. Hallelujah. Now let me speak finally over your life. I believe in the power of the prophetic. I believe in the power of the prophetic declarations. By the words that come to our spirit to frame our life. He says, Son of man, can this book live? He said, Only thou knowest. And then he said, Prophesy. My life changed because of words that were spoken over my heart. Listen. Please, if you have not participated in any part of this meeting, do not miss this. This is when God creates realities and possibilities in our lives. Believe and receive every word into your spirit. Every closed door over your life, over your destiny, in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God, I speak to that door. Some of you, those doors have been closed for decades. They were closed over your parents, closed over your loved ones. But I speak to those doors. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Master, we have toiled all night, but nevertheless, I want to speak to you, especially some of you who are students. You have done your best, you have tried to study. It looks like you get into the exam hall and all of a sudden your mind goes black. I decree in the name of Jesus, the unction that must come upon you and turn you into an intelligent personality. Receive that grace right now.
Can I speak to your CGP? Hear the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, from whatever level you are right now, I declare, let it rise. Supernatural. Let it rise in the name of Jesus. Let it rise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen to me. If you're a student here and you're in final year, lift your hands. There is a grace called the finisher's anointing. The hand of Zerubbabel that began this work, he said the same hand will complete it. God is not only Alpha, he's also Omega. When he starts, he finishes. Hear me? There are some of you right now who may have challenges that honestly, the way these challenges are, from a human standpoint, you may not graduate. It will take a supernatural work. Let me speak over your life. There is an advantage we have in this kingdom. You are not alone. I speak to every final year student. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, here at this campground, we graduate you here right now. Here at this campground, we graduate you here right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for every campus here represented. Whatever has killed the fire on your campus. And it looks like Godism is the order of the day. Drugs and all kinds of vices. In the name of Jesus, carry fire back to your campus. Take fire back to your campus. Evangelism fire. Prayer fire. Word fire. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray for every family represented here. I don't know what has kept your loved ones down. He said, son of man, what's here stand? And he said, four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Israel, against Judah, so that no man don't lift up his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters in the name of Jesus. Every horn that will not let your family rest, I stand by the God of heaven. It goes down right now. Listen to me. I want to pray for you. Everything you have been struggling with, that you are trusting God to kill it from your life and is refusing to go. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive this prayer. I'm praying for you from the depth of my heart. It says, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a crowd of witnesses. Let us lay aside every way the sin that God easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Everything that is a weight to your life that must let you go. No, you have prayed, you have fasted, it has refused to leave you. In the name of Jesus, it dies here right now. you are part of that is not promoting a healthy spiritual life wrong associations that are misleading you confusing you in the name of Jesus I break you from those associations <laughs> hear me if there is anyone here that the spirit of death is gradually eyeing your family, hoping to pick someone before this year ends. I'm speaking by the Spirit. Listen to me. If there is anyone on this ground wanting to take your father, your mother, your brothers, that between now and the end of the year, it will be said survive by, by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cause the spirit of death. I cause the spirit of death. I cause the spirit of death. By plane crash, by wicked men, by witchcraft, let it be caused forever. (laughs) 
everyone trusting God for a job here, you are trusting God to honor you with a good job that helps your efficiency by the God of heaven, whether for you or for your loved ones, three months from now, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, and by the power of prophecy, three months, may my God surprise you. Beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Baska Nakata Branda Katekos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and make a path. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.